Hi there. I'm going to talk about constraints and the new sizing classes. And we're going to talk about how you can apply these. They can be a little bit confusing and the documentation on them isn't that great. So I'm going to show you what I have learned. So you're going to start by making a single view application. We're just going to call it skip layout and we'll click create. I'm going to replace a project that I already created. This is going to be available for universal, meaning iPads and iPhones, so that we can apply these sizing classes to everything. Device orientation is okay. And we're going to just do everything in the main storyboard today. You're going to apply six different UI views to this screen. So first, we're just going to grab a view. We're going to drag it onto the screen, not a view controller, but a view. You can see that it's white, so it's a little hard to see. So let's go back to the attributes and we're going to change the background to something like blue. We're going to make the size of this. We're going to click on that measurement tool. I pre-sized these out. So the first row, we're going to make two at 210 and 133. So we're going to do 210 and 133. I'm going to pop that at the top and we'll do that as well. And we'll just copy and paste that. We'll drag it all the way over here. And that way we should have a 20 point gap. Let's do the bottom row first. So for the bottom row, we're going to do 440 by 133. So that's good. And then we'll make that something like yellow click the attributes, background, yellow. And then for the three middle ones, we'll just grab this one. And we need to make that 133 by 133, just for this example. We'll put this one over on the far side, and we'll make this one right in the middle. And we'll select all of these and we'll set the background to be, let's say, some sort of red. So we're going to apply some constraints to these views so that on any device they'll stretch. So if you were to run this right now for an iPhone 4S, you would see that it does not look right. And you'd be kind of shocked. You'd be like, what the heck happened? You could see that you have everything kind of running off the side. And the reason is, is because what we designed this for is a size class of width any and height any. And the way you can tell that is by looking down here, you see WNE and HNE. And if you click that, you can see these different size classes that are available here. You have three different size classes. You have compact, regular, and any. Compact with compact height will apply to iPhones in landscape. Compact with regular height will apply to iPhones in portrait. Regular width and regular height will apply to iPads in portrait or landscape and any width, any height will apply to everything. So make sure that you start with your size class at any width, any height, because if you start with a size class of compact or regular, then everything that you do will only apply to those devices with those size classes. So if you start off with everything in compact with compact height and you go to switch to an iPad, nothing will appear because you've applied everything to only devices with size class compact with compact height. So make sure everything's set to with any height any. What we're going to do is we're going to apply constraints to these so that when the device is resized or you go to a device that has different sizes that these constraints will apply and it'll know where to position and how to size all these different items here. So the first thing that we want to do is we know that all of these are the same height. So we can select all of these and just tell Xcode that all of these are the same height. So we can go to editor, pin, and we can go to heights equally. So we're going to pin them to be equal heights so that no matter what, all of these will stay the same heights. You can see that we had a bunch of constraints applied here. And you can see that the constraints are orange, which means that currently we have constraints applied, but the constraints we have applied do not provide enough information to properly size these items. So if you were to run it right now, it still wouldn't work because these items are orange. The constraints are orange. It doesn't have enough information. We need to turn those constraints blue. So the way we do that is by providing enough information. So now we know that all of these are the same height and these top two are the same width. So we can go to editor uh, widths equally. We can go to the, the middle three and we can go to editor pin widths equally. And we can do the bottom one, except there's only one of them, so we don't need to constrain it to any width. The next thing we can do is we can tell it about this leading space here on the left hand side that we want that to be applied as well. So what we can do to apply constraints another way is we hold control and we drag from the item to the item we want to constrain to. So in this case we're dragging from that UI view and we're dragging it to the main UI view that we want to constrain it to. So we want to constrain the leading space to the container. 
we want to constrain this middle one leading space to the container and the bottom one we want to constrain the leading space to the container. We can see everything is still orange. We haven't provided enough information, but we do have those constraints. We want to do the same thing for the trailing space to the container. It's trailing space to container for that one and trailing space to container for that one. For this middle one, we're not going to do trailing or leading space to the container. We're going to position it in relation to its uh, siblings here. So what we want to do is we want to apply a horizontal gap here. We want to do a control drag from here to here, from this view to this view. We want to say that there's a constraint on the horizontal spacing. That'll apply that. Now we can see that some things are starting to turn blue here. We're going to apply a horizontal spacing to this one to this one and horizontal spacing from this one to this one. Now we still don't have enough information for the height, but what we need to do to do that is we need to provide information about this constraint up here. So we're going to drag from here to here. We want to say top space to top layout guide and drag from here to here top space to top layout guide. So now we have enough information about that. We're going to drag from here to here to show the vertical spacing between those two items. Here to here or here to here because it's the same to do the vertical spacing between those two items and here to here to show the vertical spacing between those two items. Then we're going to do the vertical spacing between this to this, this to this, and this to this. The last thing that we want to apply is the bottom spacing down here which should seal the deal so we want to drag from this yellow view to the main view and we want to say bottom space to bottom layout guide. Once we do that you can see that our constraints are all blue which means that it has enough information to calculate the sizing of all these items. If we were to switch now to a compact width and compact height, you can see that everything sizes correctly. We go back to the any with any height, and we can run this on an iPhone 4S again. We'll see that everything does look correct. And if we were to rotate this device, you can see that everything looks correct. Now when you rotate it, you don't see that top bar, so you need to take that into account when you're doing these types of things. But you can see that everything does size correctly. If you were to change this to an iPad Air and you were to run this again, and you scroll up, you can see that everything does work where when before we did this, it just didn't work. That's the constraints. You need to apply all the constraints that are necessary in order for it to figure things out. And it's not until these constraints turn blue that you know that everything is correct. So what you can also do is you can apply certain things to certain size classes. And these size classes are new in iOS 8. But for example, if we had an iPhone in landscape and we wanted to only apply a go button. So let's take a button and just add it to this right here. Now we need to position this horizontally centered and vertically centered. So we're gonna drag from here to here and we'll just say center vertically instead of the leading space and we'll drag up and we'll go center horizontally. When we do that, both turn blue. So now you'll see that if we go to the any view, that button is gone because we only applied that button to the compact width and the compact height. You'll see that if we run this, on an iPhone 4S, we should only see this in the iPhone for landscape. So if we run this right now, you can see that the button is not there, but as soon as we rotate it this way, you can see that the button is there. So you can apply certain things to just one size class. And you can see we haven't written any code, which is pretty fantastic. That's centering horizontally and vertically. Let's go to an iPad size. And this time we're gonna do a left and a right button. We're gonna drag this button on here. so that it has that spacing for the top and the spacing for the left. And we'll just call this button left. We'll reposition it one more time and we'll just drag it over to the other side. There we go. And we'll just call it right. So now we want that button to stick to the left side and we want this button to stick to the right side. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add constraints from the button to the container, the yellow container that it's in. So we'll drag from the left button to the left and we'll do leading space to container. So we applied this to the container itself, not to the parent view. We drag up and we apply this to the top space container. And for this button, we can, we can drag up, we'll do top space to container, we'll drag right and we'll do trailing space to container. If we go to iPhone and portrait, we have neither. So maybe for the iPhone and portrait, let's just say that 
you would have this button that's centered horizontally and is close to the bottom, and we just call this button Go. What we want to do for this one is we want to apply, instead of centered vertically, leading space to container and trailing space to container. So we have to do bottom space. We added just the bottom constraint. Now if we were to rotate this, we could see that we have the button, and this one we have the Go button. And if we were to run this on an iPad Air, or any iPad, you can see that we get the left and right buttons. And if we are to rotate this, we also get the left and right buttons. Using those size classes, we can apply lots of different constraints to all the different size classes, and we haven't even written one line of code yet. So that's just a quick introduction on constraints. Now, if you go to skipcast.com, there's going to be a pro tutorial with more in-depth information into constraints. Thanks for watching. See you next time.